most people don't know, but Earth's living fossil is right here in New York City, the land of concrete buildings, crowded streets, and constant noise. We're talking horseshoe crabs, which have been around for at least 350 million years. Oh, it's a male. Horseshoe crabs can be found along the entire eastern seaboard of the U.S. Oh, there's one. But their epicenters is in the water off of New York and New Jersey, in Jamaica Bay and Delaware Bay. With 10 eyes and a long tail, they're used as bait for fisheries, as a lifeblood to birds during migration season, and as a way to test the safety of vaccines like the ones being developed for COVID-19. But they are in danger. The biggest risk is access to the shorelines for the crabs. Like for many creatures in the wild, habitat loss. Ready? So how have they survived this long? And will they be around another million years? I'm Sarah Porter, a New Yorker passionate about environmental conservation. I get out into nature every chance I get. And I become known for rescuing hermit crabs. There he is, all in a painted shell. Follow me as I go on a wildlife ride deep inside the concrete jungle. To get a good understanding of horseshoe crabs, I met up with Don Reap in Queens. Don is a coastal conservationist who's been working to protect the waters and wildlife of New York City since 1979. Anything that has to do with conserving, preserving, enhancing the coastal area, the beaches, the, the waterways, the marshes, the rivers, all come under our purview. Horseshoe crabs are an iconic species that we really like to focus on because they, they have a major ecological role in the bay. Take the red knot, a shorebird which migrates from Brazil and arrives in New York in the spring. And they feed voraciously on the horseshoe crab eggs to the point where they can double their weight in a week or two, and that enables them to fly another couple of thousand miles north where they breed. To track horseshoe crab numbers, teams of volunteers go out and count them, measure them, and tag them. Who is ready to measure? Who wants to measure? Ready to measure? Okay, come on, here you go. That's how I met Christine Neely, a science teacher and researcher who's been leading monitoring teams for nearly eight years. The spawning survey and tagging initiative take place, they coincide with the horseshoe crab's mating season, which takes place in the new and full moons during May and June. Researchers like Christine are looking to track the population size and migration patterns of horseshoe crabs. Volunteers drill tags into the crabs for identification. I'm sorry, honey, for science. <laughs> While I was out there, I caught some baby making in action. These two are having fun. Females might lay anywhere from upwards of 3,500 to 4,000 eggs per night. And depending on then what gets fertilized and then the survival rate thereafter is usually much smaller numbers. Hello, come on in. That is Edgar, who's come to visit us after the rain. You don't look too bad, Edgar. Yeah? He's snapping his bill, he would like a fish. Years ago, there was no policy on taking horseshoe crab. People came and took as many as they wanted. There wasn't any real legislation. But in the last 50 years or so, there's been a lot more harvesting of them. The eel and conch industry, they trap eel and conch using horseshoe crabs as bait. And they especially like the big females, which are full of eggs, chop them up, put them in the trap. And the eels and conch are really driven to those traps. Probably the biggest risk is uh, hardening of shorelines. Horseshoe crabs need flat, sandy beaches to lay their eggs on. But increasing levels of coastal development from townhouses to seawalls have crowded out their natural habitats. Their use in the biomedical industry is vital for humans, but has also threatened their population. Oh, what's coming out? What's coming out? That's some of their blood. They have a bluish copper-based blood, which when exposed to minute traces of bacteria will clot. So if you're getting a vaccination, or you're getting a blood transfusion or something, you want to test it for its purity, you test with the element from the horseshoe crab. In fact, horseshoe crab blood is currently being used in vaccine development to battle COVID-19. Its blood contains a substance which can detect harmful toxins, helping researchers determine if the vaccine would be safe for humans. Let's say if you've ever known someone who's had a flu shot, 
a vaccine, a hip or a knee replacement, a pacemaker. All of these things have been tested by a horseshoe crab's blood somewhere along the supply chain. Unfortunately, these biomedical practices have led to a decline in the horseshoe crab population. Some labs have begun using the synthetic, man-made blood as a more sustainable alternative, but it's only still in its infancy. In the meanwhile, the horseshoe crab will continue to be essential to vaccine development. Horseshoe crabs have been, unfortunately, now are regarded as vulnerable. That's not exactly the trajectory we want the population to take. Today, New Jersey has a full moratorium on horseshoe crabs, meaning none can be taken or harvested. Delaware and New York have catch limits and in certain areas offer full protection. Here in a preserve, they're fully protected. Which is critical because so many species, including humans, depend on them. The front two claws. And it's up to us to ensure their survival. Enjoy your Saturday night, little guy. Ooh. <laughs>